Okay, so we got ourselves 7.33D. First thing I see overall is that there are no map changes, general changes. There's no massive changes. So let's hopefully see that. What, what's our wish list? Our wish list is that all the universal heroes that right click are somehow not allowed to do that anymore. Uh, at least not nearly to the potency that they were doing it prior. So we're thinking Techies, Wind Ranger, Void Spirit, Magnus. I think that's about it. Like, I think like all the other ones are reasonable since they didn't do an overall patch to universal heroes. So. Eternal Shroud, one of the most dead items in the game prior to today. 200 gold cheaper and extra 20% theoretically, because 5 of 25 is 20%. 20% extra mana. I don't know. Uh, maybe a hero like Bristle? I'm really not sure. Uh, I'm going to start having the theory craft with Eternal Shroud because they have buffed it like five times. Octarine Core. Uh, it is no longer the old recipe. It is now a Voidstone Voidstone. So... No ring of health. Soul booster recipe. So what that means is that it can't be mana boots, vanguard, disassemble vanguard into octarine core. Definitely a huge change. Uh, I'm very grateful that they're finally like gutting this build. Um, as much as fun as it was to see Doom, Batrider, uh, do the mana boots, vanguard, disassemble, uh, it was not fun. <laughs> It was not fun. It got pretty old pretty quick. So then they also nerfed Vanguard again. It's still disassemblable, but no longer into an Octarine Core. I don't see much other reasons why you would do it. Like, you could maybe disassemble it for an item that includes one or the other, but not both. We got a Baden. 25 attack speed. Big. Uh, one of the hero, one of the universal heroes gutted pretty hard. All of his talents and all of his toolkit, basically, got nerfed. Tempest double on Arc Warden, cooldown got increased. This hero already wasn't picked in my bracket, so I feel kind of bad for Arc Warden players. I know the Manta plus Tempest double bubble thing uh, is because your illusions benefited from the magic damage, so you could just chunk people. I had heard a lot of people complaining about it, but the hero definitely was not good in my bracket. Batrider, less sticky napalm and flame break level one. Uh, okay, so his laning stage was a lot about flame break level one as a support. As a core, you'd get a level two, so definitely nerf his landing stage pretty hard here. Beastmaster, who I thought was also very broken. Only a minor nerf to his axe's damage and hawk vision a little bit. I think all of these heroes so far, I think a Baden got pretty gutted as a core. Like, I think maybe a support, he could be fine. Uh, it still hurts him as support, but like these two heroes seem perfectly fine. They're just slightly worse. Maybe not first pickable. Bloodseeker, blood right damage, and level one got reduced significantly, but it's the same at level four. Some people were going stats. Like I would do it sometimes where you go like four, one, four stats and you just leave blood right at one um, because in team fights at that stage, it's hard to hit people with it. I don't think people will do that anymore because 90 damage is significantly less than 120. This ability is mainly for range creeps in lane. People might just be willing to take it now. Like a lot of times in the past, since it's 120, 20 pure damage they'd move but they might just be willing to tank it now base strength by one stun duration i point two down in there probably still strong broodmother was a universal hero that i was starting to see in my pubs and they've now buffed her less restore time on your webs and more impact damage on silk and boa so i think we might be seeing a lot more broodmother based on the fact that i'm guessing the other universal heroes got nerfed clinks mana cost increased by five this is a hero that's seen prevalently in pubs but i was it was mentioned in my video yesterday that there's just no clinks in competitive like there's just no clinks nobody's picking him okay so now hero hits down to two instead of three that's significant these things were incredibly pesky to kill and that makes them way less pesky to kill so i mean i think clinks is kind of dead to be honest mana regen decreased by 0.5 I mean, Cassian was already having mana problems. Her aura has been nerfed several times. Base damage decreased by 2, strike damage by 10 at level 1. So, Disruptor's laning stage, which in the past was always pretty weak, is now getting targeted. Doom base armor decreased by 1. No! Uh, bonus gold rescaled to be 160 at max. Okay, I mean, that is effectively, like, with an Octarine Core, 35 GPM. Uh, without an Octarine Core, it's like 25 GPM. Bonus move speed on Scorched, nerfed. Doom was already doing, like, mediocre at Dream League. I'm pretty sure now that you've done this, plus the Mana Boots Vanguard nerf, pretty sure Doom's dead. I'll be honest. I'm pretty sure Doom is no more. I think this is just too much. Malefice damage, for instance, increased in lane. Oh my gosh. I've gotten rid of doom in my lane and i am now dealing with enigma 
Missile 2 damage increased by 50. I love how Gyro's been dead for like seven months. Or not even seven months. It's been like two years. And this is what he gets. You will stay dead until the patch for TI Gyrocopter. In which case, we will bring you back into relevance. And you will be one of the most picked heroes of the tournament. <laughs> Keeper of the Light. Teleport delay by one second. Legion Commander. Another hero we talked about seeing all the time at pubs, but not so much in competitive damage decreased by two bonus attack speed further decreased at max levels yeah i mean legion's getting gutted pretty hard like uh these things matter a lot damage on legion attack speed on legion all these things matter a lot split earth buffed a bit cooldown buffed damage buffed okay leshrac he's been irrelevant for one patch let's just buff every single spell Gyrocopter crying in the corner. Who's balancing Dota, guys? Why is Leshrac given so much love and then Gyrocopter? Uh, I mean, this, these are pretty significant buffs for Lesh. We might see him, uh, especially the Lightning Storm level 1, being 20 extra damage for CSing. That's pretty nice. Lich, base movement speed by 5. Sag, the CM treatment. Lena, Dragon Slave by 1 second. Aghanim Shard spell damage by 20. Though an extra 35 damage at max stacks. Yeah, I mean, I think Lena is still pretty unplayable. I think the new map. Is just really bad for any position-based ranged core, like Drow, Lena, Sniper. So I don't think this is enough to, like, make her relevant. Maybe since they're trying to buff the Ags, they're thinking, like, this gives her survivability because it's an extra two seconds, but I don't think that's enough. Lion, spike radius by 15, cast range by 25. We might be finally seeing Lion. Not. Lycan by 15 seconds on his ulti. Okay, so this hero is getting a picked a bit at Dream League as well. Like, not a lot, but he was seeing a little bit of love. And now they buffed it. I don't want to try like and carry now that this is uh, what he's getting. We have uh, 15 second shape shift, which means it's a 75 second cooldown. People are just doing the Echo Saber Harpoon Manta, the standard universal build. And then you get impulse damage that you might take the shape shift. I don't know. Do you take the feral impulse if you're a universal hero? Because that's like a 50 damage. Magnus, base agility by six. Ugh. Bonus effect on self cast from empowered decreased to 50%. So in the past, you'd be looking at 70% cleave and 63% damage. And now you're looking at 60% cleave, 54% damage. Yeah, so it's like a 10% on each nerf, which 10%, it's actually like, you know, 15% if you think about the actual numbers. But the idea is if Mag hits for 200, he now hits for 20 less, which is a lot. Uh, I don't think this hero will be seen carry anymore. Like, base agility and 20 damage, that's a lot. I mean, it's more than 20 damage, like, later on, and it's less than 20 damage early, but probably averages out to about that. Marcy, slight nerfs on her stat gains. Aghanim Scepter also got nerfed to be not as low of a cooldown. The Scepter silence, okay, so they're basically gutting every single right-clicking universal hero, kind of like I was hoping. Marcy wasn't seen nearly as much in competitive, but if you guys saw in my video yesterday, she was like the eighth most picked pub hero in my bracket, so still seeing a lot of play. Mystic Snake mana gain reduced by 2% at all levels. I haven't done the math. Let's compute it. I would say that that is 2% less at all levels. So that means she will not get as much mana back from her snake. Really good math, BSJ. Thank you. Illusions now have reduced damage absorption per mana. It is this instead of this. Illusions gain 0.7 damage per mana from level 25 talent. I didn't even know this was a talent, but... Okay, so they made it so her illusions are actually killable, it seems like. Um, that's like a weird way to fix a problem, I guess. Medusa was getting like first picked at Dream League, still after the nerfs, so uh, maybe add these all together. Stone duration decreased. I honestly think Medusa will still see play. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe not first pickable anymore. I think because of the way people do things where they strategize as a team, this hero will still get first picked for like next few days. And then I imagine it'll fall off a bit to like a third, fourth pick. Uh, base attack speed on Marana. I didn't even know she had 110. Back down to 100. Arrow nerfed. Marana's a right-clicking universal, kind of, but not really. It's fine that they're just giving them back to base 100 attack time. Stun duration decreased. 20 extra attack range on Nature's Prophet. Mana cost by 30. 
pull down lowers. Once again, this is a position based range hero that used to rely on BKB. I think it's hard to validate picking nature's profit. For all I know, maybe these range heroes will go up in value because Vanguard's getting gutted. Like maybe because of Vanguard getting gutted, these heroes will actually be latable, which makes them have a purpose. Not sure. Uh, bonus damage on Mind Flare nerfed. Base movement speed by five. Swashbuckle range again nerfed. Dude, that shit at level one's like... They just refuse to like give this hero meaningful nerfs. Because like in team fights, this nerf doesn't matter, right? Because he's rolling. After the laning stage, this this ability doesn't matter. So this only really matters if he's like off lane. I guess people are just going four points swash anyways. But maybe Pango players would say something else that this like 400 range. Uh, I'm actually curious how this feels. Holy shit. Okay, it's actually super short range. But, like, usually in lane, you're doing, like, uh, this anyway, you know? Like, you're just swashing the creeps from point blank range. It is very short, so it can't be used for escape whatsoever. But I don't think that's really the point of the spell in lane anyways. Phantom Lancer! Aghanim Scepter bonus illusion damage. Illusion damage nerfed. Oh, man, they replaced this talent at level 10? Oh, that's brutal. That's a really important talent to his farming, and that's, like, the stage in the game in which you're farming. I mean, PL's gone, I think. I think, like, this alone and this makes his level, like, 6 to 12 way worse. Like, way worse. Your illusions do 20% less damage, and you don't have the 2.5 second Phantom Rush agility bonus. Yeah, I mean, this hero sucks. Well, PL had his weak... He was good for about a week. Primal Beast. Each time the target is slammed, hit damage is now increased. Oh, interesting. Hugna, Life Drain, Ally Drain Heal per second, decreased by 40, 30, 20. Oh, so Life Drain now does less for allies. That's actually a good nerf. I like that, because, like, Pugna being, like, a, a little sucky-sucky bitch to his mid laner. No fun. But it doesn't, like, nerf Pugna being aggressive at all. Queen of Pain. Aghanim Scepter initial damage reduced by 30. Mana cost on Blink increased by 5. Talents got nerfed. Scream of Pain damage got nerfed. This hero was, like, popular in pubs, but it wasn't even picked that much in competitive. Her late game was pretty insane, so they nerfed a lot of her late game here by nerfing the Ags, nerfing the Talent, and the and the Scream of Pain damage. Not really sure why. I think the hero is finally, like, really fun late game, and it wasn't, like, particularly OP early game. Base agility by 2. Buff duration on Static Link is up, so they're trying to save Razor's laning phase. 14 agility is a lot. So at level 10, he's now got an extra 4 agility. What's Razor's base damage now? Still 48. So they gave the buff duration on Link an extra 3 seconds level 1, but the cooldown was recently nerfed to 50. Silencer, Arcane Curse, initial damage by 20. Shrapnel, Radius, baby. Sniper is back. That's actually a big change. That's actually a big buff. 475. I mean, let's just compare level 1 Shrapnel to, like, what it is now. Uh, this is... So, like, clips the whole creep wave, but then when we level up... That's pretty big in comparison. You see that? Huh. I mean, I know you guys all know what 75 units looks like. Fear Breaker, armor decreased by one. Cooldown on charge increased at all levels. Hero will end up being the same with Aghanims. Bulldoze cooldown reduction decreased by one. Okay. Spear Breaker, probably still strong, but this definitely hurts. Like, the cooldown of charge at level 1 being 21 seconds. That's, like, pretty big. Techies, base attack speed by 10. Sticky Bomb decreased by 10, 20, 30, 40. And Blast Off stun duration nerfed at high levels. I think you will still see Techies. Spoiler alert. I think he's still strong. Is he slightly less strong? Sure. Is he still strong? Absolutely. So Timbersaw, a hero that we mentioned in yesterday's video as coming out of nowhere, who's getting basically first picked at Dream League with a 50% win rate, like, it's winning 50% of the time while getting first picked, gets this. So I'm gonna argue that this hero is probably pretty broken. Keep picking Timbersaw if you like him, guys, and if you like him, I don't like you, because Timbersaw is annoying. Tiny cooldown decreased on Avalanche, pretty irrelevant, I'd say. Bonus damage per... Ally, pretty irrelevant, I'd say. Maybe in the lane. Eh, eh. Noxious Plague, initial damage, decreased by 50. Okay, this blades me a one. 
Please, just please, just gut this hero, please. Please, I haven't looked yet. Base strength by one, strength gained by 0.3, intelligence gained by 0.8, mana cost on dissimulate increased by 30 at all, like to be 130 at all levels. Astral step mark damage decreased by 20 at each level. Is this even enough? I think the stat gains is pretty nice nerfs. You're effectively getting 1.1 less total stats, which makes it 0.77 less damage. Per level. So every three levels, he's getting a little, a little bit less than two damage. A little bit more than less than two damage. A little bit more than two damage less. That's English. Wind Ranger. Base attack speed by 10. Okay. Also strength gain nerf by 0.4. Oh, also people mentioned the, the outer dissimilate ring is now on level 20. That's significant as well. Because that was... People utilize that a lot for survivability. Bobbing that back. Five levels. Definitely relevant. Uh, Aghanim Scepter physical damage. Damage reduction increased by five. I'd say Wind Ranger's like pretty meh. Winter Wyvern base strength, base damage, base attack speed. Okay, so they basically said, okay guys, we understand we overtuned Universal Heroes a little bit, and we're just gonna nerf all their attack speed. We're gonna leave them as is, they can keep high damage, but they're just gonna lose like 10 to 20 attack speed. In the case of a bad and 30 attack speed. Under God's Wrath got buffed again, by the way. So my overall impression of this patch is that... Heading in the right direction, I'd say the three biggest losers would be Abaddon, Doom, probably PL. I think those three heroes got gutted pretty hard. In terms of winners, Dragonite carry, baby, let's freaking go. Didn't get touched. Leshrac, definitely a big winner of the patch. I'll have to try Lesh again. Honestly, probably Broodmother. I think this hero is already underrated. People were picking her. Universal hero that's left that got, uh, that does a right click that got ignored. And honestly, in terms of winners, I would say Timbersaw, because he's probably the most popular meta hero of this entire patch that, or of 7.33c, that didn't get touched. I mean, he kind of came into the meta like two weeks ago, but he's definitely there and people are spam picking him. So I would say Timbersaw is the other one. His winner in pubs is kind of mediocre because I think people just suck at him when they pick him. But if you're a good Timbersaw player, this is your patch, I think, because they ignored you. Yeah, guys, we'll keep in track of uh, exactly how this meta plays out. The biggest change of all for sure is the Vanguard not being disassembled into this. Changes the offlane dynamic a lot. Uh, we may be seeing a lot of different offlane hero pool, which in return affects carry hero pool, which in return affects support hero pool. So... Even though there's not too many changes, I do think we'll be seeing a lot of meta changes for what heroes are popular. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Easy clap.